Welcome to True View. I'm Julie Van Gore. And I'm Jamie Shaver. And today we've got a show you're not going to want to miss. We're going to talk about the lies that bind us and the victor that sets us free. Let's do it, Jamie. Julie Van Gorp. And I'm Jamie Shaver. Hi, my name is Linda King. I'm the Ministry Center Coordinator for Cornerstone Television. I grew up on a small island in the Chesapeake Bay, and it was actually a great place to grow up. There were about 500 people on the island. Um, everyone knew each other, so it was a very close-knit family. We go clear back to the Indians in the seafood business, uh, catching oysters, crabs, fish. On Tillman's Island, you either went to church, your family went to church, or if you were a waterman, you know, the waterman had a reputation for being a partier. And my father was an alcoholic. I mean, he was a great guy, took fishing parties, everybody loved him. But he was an alcoholic, and uh, he and my mom partied a lot. And so my dad also was an abuser. He abused my mom. Whenever you have uh, domestic violence, it escalates. And of course, when my mom and dad, instead of reconciling, you know, it started to spiral down, down, down. And the, the beatings kept getting worse. And I know that he left her for dead uh, in a ditch down at the end of the island uh, more than one time. So one night, my mom never came home. And she had gotten a ride to Baltimore. She was fleeing for her life. So when my mom left us, then, you know, we kind of went in that downward spiral. And so church was not a part of my life at all. I was drinking by the time I was 12, 13 years old. I was drinking on a regular basis. By the time I was 14, I started smoking marijuana and doing other drugs. And I was doing drugs every day until I was 21 years old. Well, I had met this guy who was a, a young doctor, as a matter of fact. So here I was. Uh, we were kind of like living the high life, you know, what I, the life I wanted to live, the best wine, the best food. We were actually yuppies before it ever even became, you know, uh, fashionable. But I had an experience there. And as I was sitting there, it was as if um, a rubber mask was taken off of the face. As I was looking at my friend Randy, it was like a rubber mask came off his face and I could look down and what I saw scared me. Welcome to True View. Today's show, as we talk about the lies that bind us, I want to introduce you to our special guest, Luann Schubert, who when, once you hear the stuff that she's been through, there's not a thing out there that I think you could actually say, wow, I don't think I can be freed from this. What a powerful testimony she has, and we're excited to share that with you. I also want to introduce you to Julie Van Gort, my co-host and our resident Bible scholar. Let's get started, Luann. Tell us a little bit about your background. Um, I grew up in Florida, so I'm not from Pennsylvania. Um, I grew up in an alcoholic home. Um, my father uh, was a severe alcoholic. Um, my mother died when I was 14 months old. Mm. Um, so I grew up with only a father, and uh, as I said, he was a, a severe alcoholic. So uh, I had gone through sexual abuse, um, all kind of mental and emotional abuse. Uh, by the time I was 15, I had been sexually abused by multiple people. Um, I uh, went through several things with my father that were difficult. He uh, served in Vietnam, so there were a, a lot of things that he saw mm. that put things in him that when he would drink, those things would come out of him. Mm. And so there would be times that he would go into a depression and he would play um, Russian roulette with us. Oh, and so that. he would uh, basically put a bullet in the gun and, you know, pull the trigger and we were hoping that it was not in that chamber. And so um, those kind of things were um, common. And how, like, um, how old were you at this time, Luann, when this was going this on? This occurred um, from a very young age up until he passed away when I was 15. I was a month shy of my 16th birthday when he passed away. And you mentioned so. us when you said that. So it was you and siblings that he was yeah. doing that I too? I leave the or? siblings out. Okay. Yes, I leave the siblings okay. out of my testimony. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. I can't even, I just have visions of the movie The Deer mm -hmm. Hunter that comes to mind when you say that about playing Russian roulette. And I couldn't even yeah. stand to watch that. So that yes. is just really something. Yes. It does. It puts a lot on you um, as far as uh, just what you go through mentally um, to try to deal with that. And especially when it's someone like your father. Um, that you know that isn't supposed to happen, 
So uh, growing up was pretty interesting. Um, well, so how did what did you do? I mean, when you talk clearly, the mental uh, abuse and just the things that that were you were thinking. How are you manifesting those things? Did you know Christ at the time? Uh, no, I didn't. We grew up in a Jehovah's Witness home, so I did not know who Jesus was at all. As I grew up, I found ways to deal with things, and some of those ways were drinking um, from a very, very early age. And being mm -hmm. that my father was an alcoholic, drinking was very acceptable. Sure. You just blend right in with everyone. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that was something that I started early on. I also was, um, I handled things through anger a lot. I uh, was... Um, uh, just sometimes would go into my own little world and uh, just be a, a very much of a loner. Mm -hmm. um, I did go through a phase where I was cutting on myself. Um, that seems to be very unusual to people, but when you're in so much pain, sure. um, especially if you internalize your pain, which is what I was really good at, mm -hmm. that was the one way of beginning to feel and to beginning to do something. It felt like I was in control. So I went through phases of where I did that, um, went through phases where I was suicidal. Um, so just different ways I tried to feel like I was in control and to feel like I was uh, dealing with the pain or either trying to remove the pain. What your father did to you, did that mm -hmm. present a real problem for you as far as understanding your father mm -hmm. in heaven as a loving father? Mm -hmm. Um, no, it did not, because when I came to know the Lord, it was such radical transformation for me that I couldn't even compare the two, because my father, um, and again, it's so sad to have to say it, but he was such a monster. Mm -hmm. And I know he didn't grow up planning to be that way, and so towards the end, as I began to recover and find healing, I actually felt sad for him, mm -hmm. um, because the hurt he gave me couldn't have been anywhere near the hurt that he you had inside of him. Himself, sure. Yeah, so um, so no, it was not a problem for me to identify God as my new father and as someone who loved me. I've always yeah. heard the expression wounded people, wound people, hurting and it sounds people, like you were certainly a person yes. yeah, that had experienced yes. that, Louie. Yes. And hurting people hurt people, that's yes. very true. And I had that because I was angry um, and you justify things. Um, you justify your right to do things. And so um, I did not always have the nicest personality and I could be bold and um, you know, feel free to do that. And probably in your anger, you were then hurting someone else. Yes. You know, making true the statement yes. again that hurting people are gonna hurt yes. others. Mm -hmm. So at what point um, did you come to have a relationship with Jesus? Um, I had uh, been involved in the New Age a little bit, and again, something else I was leaning on so that I could figure out how to deal with some mm -hmm. of my pain and feel like that was in control of my life again. And this was right after my father had passed. Um, a uh, person who was kind of our guidance counselor at the school, she was actually a mental health counselor, she had what they called like a health, uh, mental health awareness week that she would do once a year in the school. And she, because she was a very strong Christian, mm. she would invite people who were Christians who could do like teachings and different things on a mental health basis. And so she invited this young girl who came to the school and she was supposed to talk about her story of growing up being sexually abused. Um, she became a drug addict. But she also had an interesting testimony of being in the new age as well. And so she began to tell me certain things and talk. I'm sitting there going, I can do some of those things, but I'm not anywhere near what she's talking about, you know, she was a part of. But then she began to talk about Jesus a little bit and just talk about, you know, just touch on that. So when she got done, I went up to her and I said, you know, I can do some of those things that you're talking about, but I'm not part of any occults or anything. And she said, oh my, you can do that? She says, well, let me tell you, you need Jesus. And I'm thinking, oh. Jesus who? Like, do you have his phone you number? <laughs> like, 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 this guy sounds great. Like, can, you know, what can we do to meet him? And so she said, no, he's the son of God. And so she began to talk to me about some of the things that I may deal with, but she began to teach me that Jesus is the name above all names and that in that name, I could overcome anything. Well, by this time, the counselor who welcomed her in had also kind of begun to teach me and take me under her wing. She knew that when a, when a child who's 16 loses her father and has no emotions, that something's wrong. So she had sent some people kind of in the school out to kind of talk to me and kind of mm, bring me in. And you think that. of just you know, how the Lord is yeah. in the details that went mm -hmm. before you on all that, yeah. Luann. He sends people in. You know, I love the scripture that says God sets the lonely in families. Yes. And so he did. He began to bring people to me who would introduce me to Christ. Some did it through bold testimony and some did it through the hand of love. When you found this freedom 
what would you say were the top two lies as you began to to get into a deeper relationship with Jesus? Um, I would say the first one was just minim minimizing my lifestyle. You know, sometimes you just think that everybody grows up that way, you know? And then when you start to realize things, you know, well, I've got a right to be angry. You know, and you minimize what that anger is doing to other people. Um, cutting on myself, I minimized it, you know? What do you and, mean you know, by minimize? Like, can you yeah. just share with us? Um, I made less of it than what it really was. Um, so you were in denial? You were just saying, well, that's just not a big deal? You know, interestingly enough, everybody has different personalities, but my personality was bolder. So denial wasn't really part of it. I kind of knew what was going on, and I chose to do it. But I was able to do that because I minimized the effect that it was having on me and others. Okay. I mm -hmm. took liberty mm -hmm. because of the type of bold personality I have. And that allowed me to do some of these things and minimize the effect and minimize the reason why I was doing them. So I just didn't think that they um, mattered that much. And it wasn't until I started, uh, you know, really getting to know Jesus that um, my eyes began to open. You're kind of just deceiving yourself yeah, in the midst exactly. of all that, it Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and like. I'm thinking, this really matters. I shouldn't minimize this in my life because this is hurting other people, and this is hurting myself. We're going to continue this story uh, that Luann has to share with us when we come back. Thanks. It was as if um, a rubber mask was taken off of the face as I was looking at my friend Randy. It was like a rubber mask came off his face and I could look down and what I saw scared me. A fear struck my heart and I knew I wasn't living right. And I thought, if I get out of here tonight, I'm not coming back. But when I had this experience, I knew I wasn't living right. And so I made a choice that I was going to you know, go back home. I knew something was different. But about that time when I met my husband, Robbie, uh, my roommate Sue and I had moved out to his place. We were out there partying and um, these people came out and they came out preaching the gospel. And so that's how I ended up getting saved. Welcome back. We were just hearing an amazing testimony from our guest Luann Schubert on just the power that she's found, the freedom, and of course the truth she found in Christ. I, mean, I want to just go back to that uh, place in the story where you were talking about minimizing and, and the destruction that that's caused. And you know, one of the scriptures I love that Jesus said, I'm going to go, but I'm going to leave you the Holy Spirit, yes. and you're going to be glad I did even that. More, even, even more. Even Even more. <laughs> and then it says the Holy Spirit is a revealer of truth. Yes. And I think that's where, you know, there's just such a beautiful thing that happens when you come to know Jesus, that the Holy Spirit is able to come in and just begin to bring that truth that changes your life. And the truth that you cutting yourself mm -hmm. is a big problem. Yes. And, and the truth that the truth that sets you free. I mean, yes, only amen. the truth that sets you free and nothing else will ever set you free, but mm -hmm. the truth and the truth is the person of Jesus Christ. Absolutely. Yes. And what would you say is the second lie that was most penetrating in your life? Um, once you realize you're minimizing things and you learn what they are, then the second thing the enemy comes in to tell you is, well, you can't change it. You're always going to be that way. And I had gone through a place where, you know, not just being broken, I actually thought I was damaged, mm -hmm. like damaged goods. Yeah. And, and then the enemy says, and you're never going to change that. And then people reinforce that you'll never have a successful marriage. Um, I had a horrible anxiety disorder. Um, I, I just uh, really struggled, like I said, in the anger, the anxiety. I just felt like everybody was going to turn around and leave me. Um, when you lose a mother at that age, there are certain sure. things psychologically that happen. And so that loneliness, that fear of people leaving me, all that was there. And so everyone from the counselors to anybody else the enemy could send um, would just say that, you know, your life's always going to be like that and you're never going to have a healthy relationship. Mm -hmm. And through well, the Holy Spirit just revealing things to me, I learned that that really was a lie. Yeah. And um, God could, you know, Jesus said, I came to give you life and life more abundantly. abundantly. Yes. And so embracing that and just following the leading of the Lord, here I am today. I just uh, was married. Oh, oh well, yes. congratulations. congratulations. <laughs> yes, I have the most amazing man in the world. Oh, um, he is I think he's got a pretty special woman there. <laughs> yeah, <Well, laughs> only because he put up with that until she became yeah. special. So <laughs> he got to see me before all the testimony oh, was finished. That is, that is so, the man of yes. that the Lord sent you. He was he heaven did. sent. It he was like. divine. So, yeah. yes. So. But even when you're saying that, Luann, I think about again that Jesus comes to set the captives free. Mm -hmm. And your situation is very particular to yours. I know that there are other people that have similar kinds mm -hmm. of stories of, of whether it's alcoholism or molestation or other mm -hmm. abuse. But 
every one of us has been in some way taken captive by the enemy of our mm -hmm. soul. Yes. And yet to know it doesn't matter what the circumstances, yes. that the That's Lord right. is bigger than that and able mm -hmm. to set us free from everything. Mm -hmm. And Julie, you have mentored women for over 18 years, led Bible studies and taught Bible studies. And I know you've come across this issue, unfortunately, of molestation and abuse mm -hmm. so many times. And it seems that there's a common thread of of just the pain that that brings with women being ashamed. Yeah. And, and that's so where how the enemy, they, how the enemy overcome again that? always wants to come to bring shame into yeah. our lives. I mean, mm -hmm. he is the author of shame. And the, what the Lord longs to bring is conviction, mm -hmm. the conviction of our sin, but there's never that shame. It is that place of being able to say, whatever was done to you again, to come to the place of where you're not bound by unforgiveness. And yes. I love what you said, Luann, and that is the place that I talk with people too. Whatever was done to you, we go to Jesus on the cross, that even mm -hmm. as he was being murdered, he said, Father, forgive them, yes. for they know not what they do, that your father, and mm -hmm. people will say, why does that make sense? He, he knew what he was doing. Well, eternally perspective, he didn't know, because if he could see all of eternity, Yes. He would not have done to you mm -hmm. what he was doing to you. And that's one of the things that I share with people. And you know, shame was a big issue for me. And I had learned in the beginning that guilt says I did something bad. Shame says I am something bad. Yeah. And shame was a big thing that was instilled in me. And it was reinforced when people said, well, you let this happen, you know. Oh. And so those things really did begin to make me feel damaged. And uh, so shame was one of the hardest things there was to break because it really does uh, corrupt who you are on the inside and how you perceive yourself. Um, and But again, that's the beauty of Jesus. Um, there is nothing he can't do. With man, this is impossible. With all the counselors, this yeah. is impossible. But with God, all things, all things are, are possible. possible. So I have really overcome things leaps and bounds. And it wasn't that I met Jesus and something magical happened and I was healed and that day was, you know, changed everything. There was a process. Sure. I, I did some counseling, but everything I did wasn't going to be successful if I didn't involve Jesus. And so everything I did um, through all the steps and the learning was as successful as it is because of Jesus. And I think again, that he is the author mm -hmm. and the perfecter of our faith, that he was the one that was there starting with your faith in him, but he's mm -hmm. also carrying us through and walking yes. along that path with us. Yes. And he knows our hearts sometimes better than we mm -hmm. do and where that healing needs to occur. Mm -hmm. Were there specific things that you were doing to um, just help you with that healing? Um, you know, again, just I got into some counseling because they can just oh, open things Christian up. Counseling? Yes, um, yes. Well, it's God's so amazing. <laughs> I started out going to where I was able to get counseling, okay. but again, God sent me the first counselor um, was not um, who I needed to be with. She tried to help me through hypnosis, which wasn't a good thing. But the second counselor that I magically got moved to, so to speak, actually, divinely. yes, <laughs> yes, yes <laughs> divinely. But I'm saying the world yeah. would say coincidentally, yeah, magically. Right. No, it was divine. She actually was a very strong um, counselor who was actually very experienced in the occult. And so she was one behind the scenes praying for me to really come to truth, um, the truth of Jesus. Experience in the occult in the sense that she knew the dangers knew of it and was work. a believer to yes. be And I was not even talking to her about that. Okay. I came to her for healing with sexual abuse and shame and mental abuse. But, she, but when I'm telling her how I was dealing with that, she's really praying behind the scenes for me. And it wasn't until many years later that um, she again got to understand the power of her prayers and how it began to deliver me. So it was through counseling that I sought out some things. And then again, a lot of prayer, a lot of study in the word, um, and just continuing to press on when, when days felt impossible, continuing to believe they could be possible. I am so inspired by Luann's yes. story of yes. just bringing hope and healing in the one who is hope and healing. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. God's word is life changing. But some people just don't know how to study it, especially when they have a specific issue or need in their life. What if you had this? I want to introduce you to a topic-specific Bible study in a box where you will learn, pray, and conquer life's challenges through this easy-to-use Bible study so you can live victoriously. Through this study, you and your friends and family will receive the life-changing power of God's Word in a simple, effective way. This study contains 52 cards that have a scripture on one side and a prayer relating to that scripture on the reverse side. You can use the study in its entirety or one card at a time in so many different ways. Be inspired during your family devotionals. Your child will be inspired at bedtime. Read a new one each day before work. 
or simply send them to friends and family who might need encouragement. The sky's the limit. To order the Bible study in a box, simply visit trueviewministries.org and click on the shop link. Bible study in a box is a great tool for memorizing scriptures and learning to pray effectively. Don't hesitate. Go to trueviewministries.org and click on the shop link at the top of the page to order today your Bible study in a box. Take your faith to a new level and order today. Back, Luann, when you, is there any particular story that you really remember that just sticks out as to the amazing provision that God often provides almost behind the scenes? Um, you know, again, there's several I could go into because God sent so many people and each had their own gifts and their own ways to reach me. But there's one in particular that I love to tell because if you are someone who's praying for someone and you just feel like it's never going to happen, um, I like people to see the end of the story because sometimes they don't get to see it. And so one time I was um, speaking at a, a Votex school. Interesting enough how God got me into many places to tell his story. <laughs> Your life is um, truly amazing. It's been interesting. So I was there and there was an, a reporter wanting to do a newspaper article on me. And um, so what happens is I'm telling this story about when I was going to a school in this area, I was in fifth grade, and the school was, it was a tough school, it was a rough school. And I was picked on really bad in school, um, just, just picked on really bad and not having a mom. You'll be surprised some of the cruel things that kids uh -huh. will say um, that, that you wouldn't even think of what they would say to me about not having a mom. But this lady loved me right where I was. And this comes into what we had mentioned that people don't care how much you know till they know how much you care. And I didn't know anything about this woman except she cared for me. Mm -hmm. And that got my attention. So she would bring things to me like a hairbrush or some deodorant because again, growing up in the way I did, I didn't have any of those things and that made kids pick on me more. So uh, she would kind of take care of me here and there in different ways. And um, so finally, uh, at one point, my father did something very violent to another man and we were kind of whisked away very quickly. And so he checked me out of school and we disappeared. And that was the last she saw of me. So here I am now, you know, however many years later, because I was in the fifth grade, now I'm whatever, 18, okay. and I'm speaking at this book tech, and the newspaper reporter comes up to me, and I tell this story, and she says, you know what? She's actually at school right now. She oh. said, get this, she said, today is the last day of school, and it's the last day of her career. She's retiring. Oh, oh she's my okay. Gosh. Anybody who doesn't think God is in the details needs to. Think and that he is always on time. <laughs> yeah. So here we've got like 30 minutes or something before school's out. So we rush over there, and I walk into the room. And the thing that was interesting about this was I would lean on her um, in, in a way that people couldn't imagine. Because when I would leave school, I got home before a lot of other people. And there was a guy who would come regularly to sexually abuse me. And so some days to get out of that, I would walk back to school and sit outside the fence. So as she would come pulling out, I would make up stories. Lightning struck, I got scared, I came here, or my door was open. But she never knew that she was freeing me from a nightmare. And so every once in a while I could do that. So when I came back to her that day and I entered into the classroom, same classroom, and I came up to the desk and I squatted down and she's paying, you know, writing papers. And I looked at her and I said, I don't know if you remember me, but I'm the little girl that waited outside the fence for you. And immediately she just grabbed my hand and she says, oh my God, she says, I didn't know if you were alive or dead. She says, but I prayed for you. And I said, well, I've got good news. I said, not only am I alive, but I know Jesus. Oh, and she jumps up. And she right. jumps up and starts to tell all the kids, Jesus loves you, and I told oh. you he's there for you. So I actually have a newspaper article with her picture and me together. <laughs> so sometimes when you pray for people and you love people and you just wonder, God, did you hear me? Oh. Yeah. You never know the fruit that's coming oh, down the road. So, so she gets the crown. Every time I do something that leads people to Jesus or helps rescue people from darkness, she's getting a crown. That's right. Her and all the other women that begin to rescue me and, and impart things into my life. Um, so that's one of my favorite stories because I you love never that. Know. Yeah, that is amazing. And yeah. when we look at it, one of the things that Jamie and I talk about so often on our show is the power of prayer. Yes. And you have just yes. given us that again 
evidence. And we know prayer, when people say, what difference does prayer make? It makes all the difference in the world. You can be a lifesaver because you're connected to the one who is ultimately the lifesaver there. And she doesn't know what she prayed me through. You know, she, I mean, the nightmares were worse and worse. And so her prayer sustained me. There was times that I wanted to just commit suicide. But because one person loved me, you just think there can be another one. And so there were some days you really do, that just that seed that got planted that someone could love me for no reason. I just think you know? again with that, Luann, is how the light always shines in the darkness. Yes. As dark as it is, that one little light, that one little star is mm -hmm. what catches your attention. Yes. And just what a testimony, the one person who demonstrated mm -hmm. Christ-like love and was the hands yes. and feet of Christ. And yes. I also think of how we've been commanded by scriptures to take care of the you know the destitute the mm -hmm. orphaned the widows yes. those people who are the least able to provide that is the god that we yes. serve that's his heart yes. and that here she was just being jesus with with skin on to you yes exactly and you know there was the one woman who was the counselor for the school wanted to just embrace me into a family and see this is another section where god's going to bring healing and she says to me why don't you come over for thanksgiving one day but still being hard i said I don't need any handouts because she was, um, here I am, kind of a country girl and I uh, didn't dress the best and she actually drove this like pink Lincoln and so I'm thinking, <laughs> what do you want to have to do with me? But she welcomed me in her home and she began to teach me what it meant to have a family and to have kind of that mom and, and to have those role models in my life. So again, here comes someone who kind of adds on to what Jesus is doing. And you know, we don't have a lot of time here, but I would love to just get a quick answer. Um, if someone's watching this and going, well, wow, that's really great for you. It looks like God brought around to you mm -hmm. all of these helping hands and loving hands, but I don't see that in my life. Mm -hmm. What would you say? Um, just keep moving forward. Um, do not give up because you would be amazed at that who saw you that you don't know. They saw you and they're praying for you. And Jesus desires above all things that we have life and life more abundantly. And he paid the price to make that happen. So I can just say, don't give up. Don't let people cause you to go to a place that, that will never allow you to come back. Just hang in there, find people to pray with, contact this ministry and, and get connected where somebody can pray for you and just help heal you. We'll be right back. Thank you so much for joining us on today's show and we hope like we have been just renewed in the truth that Jesus cares, Jesus loves, he's in your life and he wants to make a difference. We are committed to truth and that is the truth that sets you free.